What's going on, guys? This is Mr. Teej, 66 Movie Reviews. I am Mr. Teej. Today's movie review is an old school movie, well, for me at least, 1996's Romeo and Juliet, directed by Baz Luhrmann, starring Claire Danes and Leonardo DiCaprio. Now, I saw this movie in the theaters when it was originally released because uh, my English teacher took uh, the entire class to see it. I think, like, a whole bunch of, like, schools across the area went and saw this movie, so... That was pretty cool to actually go see a movie for a day, you know, because I was a film geek even back then. And I remember thinking, okay, it's good, I guess. I couldn't understand what the hell they were saying, of course, being, you know, a young teenage boy. So, I, I generally liked it. Cool visuals. Um, but how does the movie hold up after all these years? I'd say pretty good. Um, I've read a little more Shakespeare since then. I'm certainly not going to sit here and say I'm you know, an expert in it in, in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, I, I've read a little bit more, so I, I kind of understand it a little bit better. And so I can understand the dialogue a little bit better. And this movie's pretty solid. Um, visually, it's pretty good. It's, you know, it's, it, it is a full-length music video because they were trying to be hipper and more cooler, you know, for my generation. And, you know, for the most part, the visual style works pretty well. There's a few times where it gets a little much, but I'll get to that soon. Uh, as for the two leads, uh, DiCaprio is pretty solid. He's very boyish, you know, kind of charismatic. Fumbles a little bit sometimes, although it's weird to see. I mean, it's going to sound weird to say, but it's weird to see when the male lead is, like, almost more attractive than the uh, female lead. Now, he's got the glowing, you know, lock of hair and everything like that, so it's it's just kind of amusing. But he does a pretty solid job. Claire Danes also is very good. She has that Gen X thing down pretty well, you know, brooding, you know. She's cute, and, you know, the two of them make a cute couple, and, you know, I don't know if they necessarily, you know, their passion is, you know, overwhelmingly great, but it's pretty solid where you, you know, I root for him, even though we obviously know what's going to happen at the end. The supporting cast is also very good. Dude, Jamie Kennedy's in this movie. I could not believe it when I was watching this movie again. I'm like, is that Jamie? It is Jamie Kennedy. It's just so weird. You expect him to start going into a rap, you know, song or something like that in the middle of the take. So that was really weird. But he does a good job in his limited screen time. Um, the woman who plays the nurse, I can't remember her name for the life of me. She was also very good. You know, there's a few times that she gets a little cartoony. But, you know, for the most part, pretty good. Uh, the scene stealer for me was Paul Cer Servino, who's just awesome as Juliet's father. He is just... He finds just the right balance of over the top, and yet you still believe him. And there's actually a scene where he, he actually gets to sing, because in real life he's an opera singer. So that was cool. They got gave him a chance to use his set of skills for that. So he's definitely one of the high points for me. The other part, high point for me is probably Harry... Oh, God, I can't remember his last name. The, the African-American guy who plays our Romeo's best friend. He is absolutely fantastic. He handles his dialogue with perfectly... And he's just such a likable, charismatic presence that I almost wish he had played Romeo. I think he would have been even better. You know, DiCaprio's good, but this guy would have been even better. Um, cinematography's pretty good. Um, there's also kinds of, there are all kinds of little, like, background references to other Shakespeare uh, works, you know, lines of dialogue. They're pretty much right there on the surface. You can pretty much see them coming from a mile, or see them a mile away. So that was always fun, even though I'm not, like well-versed in it. I know it enough to be like, oh, shit, there we go. There it is right there. Um, the soundtrack. Oh, we have to talk about the soundtrack. How could we not? It's one of the most, probably one of the biggest selling soundtracks of the 90s. I mean, you've got the Butthole Surfers, the Kerrigans, uh, it's Garbage, I'm trying to think who else, uh, Everclear, I mean, and for the most part, the songs are very well, you know, placed in the film. They add, you know, they add and don't detract from the overall experience. Um, you know, trying to get, make it more hipper and edgier. And for the most part, they do a good job with it. Uh, i trying to think. Uh, the action sequences are also very well staged. Obviously, they, they don't use swords anymore, because this is supposed to be a more modern setting, so they, they use guns. And I like the fact that the guns are called swords. Like, on the, they're actually inscribed swords on the actual guns. It's just, that's, that's a cute little touch. I like that. And the action sequences are pretty much a mix of, like, I'd say John Woo meets uh, Spaghetti Western, sort of a fusion of those two ideas. And they're very well staged, lots of energy, so kudos to Baz Luhrmann for that. Now, the big problems I have with this movie, watching it again, is I'd say the tone. I mean, some of the acting, actually pretty much all the actors, without fail, go over the top in their acting. Now, I know it's supposed to be Shakespeare, and it's supposed to be over the top, you know, 
bigger than life, but there are just some times where in this movie it just gets too much. The actors literally start screaming their dialogue. I mean, you expect, like, steam to come out of their ears or something like that, or, like, you know, a cartoon, a hooga sound effect to come in. It is just ridiculous, especially the opening scene at the uh, gas station where the Capulets and the Montague is me. I mean, it's full of lines like, you go back to you know, like, just ridiculous. Ridiculous, and it's just, I just roll my eyes every time. It's just like, tone it down just a little bit, you know? It, it doesn't have to be that ridiculous, you know? A lot of my friends have argued that, you know, it's totally appropriate, and, you know, that's their opinion, but I just think toning it down a little bit would have been better. Also, the visual style, while for the most part it does do a good job, you know, giving it energy and style, there's a few times where just, it's so over-edited, it's a music video, I mean, it's, this has probably been reviewed many other times on uh, other reviews, but it basically is a full-length music video sometimes. And there's just a few times where it just gets a little too over the top, and, you know, I really wish they had toned it down a little bit, you know, because there are times where Baz Luhrmann does, you know, stop, and, and it becomes a more traditional film where it's very good, it's very moving, it's very involving, and, you know, you don't need all that extreme visual, or as much extreme visual style, so... That, it just, it bothers me a little bit. You know, the language is very well used in the film. Of course, it's Shakespeare's language, obviously. And it's a very fascinating contrast with all the modern, you know, all the modern day uh, stuff going on. You know, they're speaking in this weird, or not weird, this Shakespearean language. It's, it creates an almost alternate reality where, like, you know, this kind of language is used all the time. You know, it's very, it's fascinating. It's a fascinating film for that reason, too, that, like, it's almost caught in some kind of time warp or something. I don't know how best to explain it, but... So, that's, that's a lot of fun. But overall, if I had to rate this movie... I guess a little bit of nostalgia does come into play here, since I did see it as a kid, or as a teenager. So, I would overall give it probably an 8.1. It's a pretty solid film. Definitely, re I would definitely recommend checking it out, you know, if you're into Shakespeare. I mean, if you're not, then nothing will probably change your mind. I'm starting to kind of get into it, so it's okay. But, yeah, overall 8.1, but... Anyway, that's today's movie review. I am Mr. Teach 66 Thank you, for, as always, for watching, and I'll see you next time.